this. How hard is it for a company to change its stripes? That's the question when it comes to Chegg, CHGG. It's a small cap company, single digit stock, that for a long time was mainly a provider of rental textbooks for high school and college students. But as academia increasingly goes digital, Chegg has been trying to transform itself into a digital provider of a vast array of services for students that help lower the exorbitant cost of higher education in this country. What a good thing. Beyond textbooks, the company now gives students access to online homework help, assistance with course, course with scheduling, tools that help high school students decide where to go to college or if they should, and how to get scholarships, listings that help college students get internships, which I had this when I was growing up. Chegg now has 700,000 digital subscribers, and they also make money selling advertisements, and other brand partners are trying to sell themselves to students. It's all part of a big mix that we're going to find out more about. Unfortunately, Chegg had a rough time lately. The stock's now down almost 40% from where it came public in November 2013, including a vicious 12% decline over the past three weeks. But this market's been tough. Part of that is the market. It's been terrible until this rebound today. Part of it is because Chegg reported at the beginning of August. And many investors viewed the results as disappointing because of some disappointing headlines. Now, I can see where those investors were coming from, because while the company delivered a top line beat, the quarter engendered a lot of negative commentary. I want to talk about that. The company feels as though the negative statements in reaction to the quarter were misguided. And here on Mad Money, we always like to give executives a chance to state the case. So let's take a closer look with Dan Rosenzweig, the chairman and CEO of Chegg. Find out more about the quarter and where the company's transition from a textbook rental play to a digital services provider is going. Mr. Rosenzweig, welcome to Mad Money. Good to see you, Dan. Mr. Kramer, how are you? Uh, have a seat. Thank you. a hearty you. booyah from oh, Silicon Valley. Thank you very much. Thank All right, you. so I've got BMO Capital talking about ups, upside surprise, uh, beating the consensus. Barrington Research, these all came out today, the thing, results topped expectations. I've got J.P. Morgan saying that that, uh, the solid results and better than expected. I've got Piper Jaffrey saying the numbers were above consensus. The headlines were that you missed the quarter. And I want people to understand that these headlines may not always be accurate. Well, you're right. And so, you know, this is, it's a very interesting thing when you're transitioning a company because the communication is critical, particularly to investors. And the difficulty is so many of these press outlets no longer have human beings that even cover the story. They have bots that pick up numbers. Or in the case of Reuters, our actual, the person covering the company was in Bangalore, India, so they knew nothing about the company. We had to wake her up at 4.30 in the morning and say, you got it all wrong. And they said a very big miss, even though I just read what really yeah, happened. They said we missed EPS by 11 cents when we actually beat it by 4 cents. It was the biggest beat we had ever had, and we raised guidance for the rest of the year. And so it's really difficult because when we're transitioning our business from the traditional print textbook right. business to the digital business, the revenues go down, which is actually a good thing because right. we, instead of having to recognize the entire price of the book where we rent, we're only recognizing the commission from England, which is uh, from Ingram, which is our partner, right. and that has 55 percent gross uh, margins well, instead of 12. And it's, I'm glad you put it because, in other words, there's a complexity to it, yes. and the, and the headline, the people who wrote the story did not understand the complexity. That's when right. I dived into it, because you told me to, you said, Jim, dive into it. I saw right. exactly what you mean. Now let's talk about the company. This is yeah. back to school season. This is these are your heydays. How's it going? It's going, we're having, we're very excited. I mean, okay. this is back to school rush and my daughter, Sam, just went back to Colgate and my nephew, Sam, I got two Sams in the family. He just got accepted today to Iowa State and University of Iowa, so I'm very proud of them. But you know, this is starting last week and then this week and the next week is our big textbook rush. Right. So this is when it goes crazy. And if you go check out our Twitter feed, you'll see students love us. So this is textbook season that immediately following becomes our homework help season and our tutoring season and then internship season and then high school students getting into college season. So we've diversified the company so well that we've got we've got a 365 day a year business instead of four days a year. Now, uh, getting the word out, I know, has been an issue, if yes. only just because people just view. I mean, when I asked my daughter at right. Tulane, she goes, oh, dad. I buy my textbook at Amazon. I said, well, how about some of the other services? And her reaction was, no, they, they just provide textbooks. Right. And so, and you know, I, look, it's, it's an issue. Yeah, it's an opportunity. Okay. So, you know, when five years ago when I took over the company, all we did was rent textbooks. That's okay. it. So we had four-day-a-year relationship. We rented, returned, rented, returned. Now we've got over 50% of all college students in our network, 75% of all high school students who intend to go to college, and 70% of our members right. use this for something other than the textbook business. So in the minds of students, we have crossed that chasm. So you mentioned we had 700,000 digital subscribers. That was 700,000 in the quarter. Right. Oh, so okay. we had, we'll have well more than a million in the year. And so interestingly enough, 40% of our paying subscribers this last quarter, right. where we had the, the beat and then we raised for the rest of the year, are digital subscribers. Three years ago, they were zero. 
Our digital revenue three years ago was zero. This year we're saying it's going to be between 137 and 145 million. All right, Dan, how about two years from now? What does this company look like? So, look, we expect this company, first of all, by the end of next year and hopefully earlier, mm -hmm. it'll be a pure digital company. We will no longer own any of the physical textbooks. Our partner, Ingram, will use their right. cash. So we've gone from a company that was losing, using $100 million in cash to being cash flow positive, a company that never made money to being profitable this year, and a company who was slow growth to growing at 37% last quarter on a pro forma basis. So you can expect this company to keep growing like that, right. offering more services, more help, more tutoring, more math, more English, everything that helps a college kid. So and, and cut costs. And cut reduce costs. costs and improve outcomes. And that's what go. we want to do. Dan Rose, like, thank you for explaining to us what happened thank and you. what's going on. I think that's really important. Dan's the chairman, president, and CEO of Chegg, CHGG. Now you got the facts. Stick with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.